Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial video and this one's going to be a little bit different because 5.6 has just been released at the time of this viewing so what I'm going to do is we're going to show you something a bit interesting about the arena shooter variant they made basically it's an arena shooter that doesn't work for multiplayer so we're going to fix that and take a look at Epic's code what they've done for the variant and show you how to make it work for a multiplayer set and it also explain why it doesn't work for multiplayer Let's go ahead and jump in. First of all, seeing it not working and then explaining how to fix it. Let's go. So this is the multiplayer, well, no, the arena shooter variant, sorry. And I've made it multiplayer by going up here and changing the number of players here to two and change it to a listen server. So I'm going to launch it as two windows. Just bring them over. And immediately you can see one issue in the sense of the UI is appearing for the server. Okay, they appear fine. Um, we get a gun and let's go find the other player. You know, notice something a bit weird already going on there. Um, and you can also see how it's not really working visually, but also if I go to the other player, I can move, but I can't aim. Now that's interesting. So let's figure out why that's the case. So, and you also get a load of ton of, load of errors. So let's go through that and explain what we're seeing here. So first of all, we need to go into the first person shooters um, class. So this is not the first person. This is the variant shooter folder and blueprints, first person, BP, FP shooter. Open that one up. And we're also going to want its parent class, which is this first person character. I'll click on this and up we go. So this is the first issue we've got to solve is this possessed function. So the possessed event only fires on the server side, meaning that when a player joins, the server is going to get the controller, check whether or not it's a player controller, um, and then do all this stuff on it. But the problem is, we are not... When you add a mapping context to it, this only works on the client, hence this little icon over here. And same for the widget. This only happens on the client side as well. So this is kind of pointless being on here. Because you've got a server call calling a client call, which is not really great. So we need to separate that out. So what I'm going to do, if is possessed is happening over here, we're going to cast to the player controller and we're going to bring it across. What we're going to do is just separate that out. And we are going to create a customer event in here called init player controller. And that is going to be plugged into the switch on string here. Disconnect the rest of that. And I want to feed it the player controller class. So on my inputs for the player controller, let's add the player controller class, like so. Okay, um, let's put that as well, player controller, like that. And basically the stuff that's going into here will go into there. Okay, so now I can call the init player controller at the end of our possessed event. Plugging that in. I have to refresh that. Yep. The name of it broke. There we go. And then we need to make the init player controller uh, replicate over here. We're going to replicate onto owning client. So the owning client will get this controller and do all this. Okay. I'm going to hit compile, save that. Right, let's see if that fixes a couple of things there. So, server, move around, okay. Fine, we can now look around and move around, okay. Cool. Okay, next up is this weird stretching body issue. So, obviously, we, only, we don't want two meshes showing, we only want one mesh showing. And, well, that's not great. So, why are there two meshes? Let's go a look at how this is working. So if I push F8 here, actually let's go back here and let's go back to single player for a second. And you port. Okay, now go F8. You can see we have two meshes. Okay, so you have the, uh, the first person mesh and the character mesh. And the reason why that is the case is so that when we look down, we see mesh doing stuff like this, but it's not going to cause any clipping issues with the helmet okay so what how is that actually working 
So let's take a look at the character again. So in the first person character, we've got the two meshes going on. We've got the first person mesh and we've got the mesh. Only one of these is actually being used for shadows. So we can actually take a look at that and see here we've got car shadow for this one. But this one hasn't got car shadow. So this one, I'm guessing, is the one that's stretching out because we weren't seeing the shadow for that one being stretched out. So I'm going to guess then that that is the one that we need to make sure is hidden from the player. Okay. So let's take that out there. And we want to make sure that this is set as hidden in game. We don't ever want it showing for either the plague or the uh, cli uh, clients or servers. The only thing that's this being used for is to attach the camera here to the head, I'm guessing. Yeah, so as it walks, the head gets a head or head bob to it. So let's go ahead and play test this now. Two players. And that's there. Okay. Looking a bit better there. Looking a bit better there. Okay. Cool. So let's go get a gun. Okay. So you can see the character over there with the gun, got aiming, working as you would expect. Excellent. But, alas, shooting. Nothing works for shooting. That's a problem. Um, we've also got the issue as well where the UI isn't showing for the other character. So we're getting the UI for the gun when we pick it up. That's correct. But you notice how the score zero, 0 at the top isn't showing yet. So we need to figure out where that's coming from. So let's go ahead and find that UI. There's my overlay. I'm going to go into my reference viewer. It tells me it's happening in a game mode. Now that's going to be the problem because game modes only work on the server. So let's go fix Epic's mistake here. We can't put that on here. Instead, let's put this onto the player controller instead. So we're going to cut that from there and go to the first person BP shooter controller. And in here on the begin play, or possess really, that'd be fine. Now, we'll put that on there, like that. Okay, so now let's double check that that is okay. We've got the zero, zero in the top for both characters. Mm, nope, we're missing that one for the client still. So what's the issue we're seeing here? Access and I'm trying to read class, get local player subsystem, blah, blah, blah. Click on this. Okay. So FB shooter, I'm going to see if controller changed. Uh, we'll come back to that in a second. Let's just focus on getting that UI showing. So on here, binary event destroyed, add to controller. That should work. And that make double check that is the correct widget. Uh, and that should work. Let's take a look and add breakpoint. Okay, so server, that's correct. It should trigger again for the client, but it doesn't. Okay, that must mean that the possessed here is only running on the server side. So let's take it off of there and just put begin play. Part complete. Okay, now we've got a UI on both sides working as intended. Excellent. There you go. We fixed uh, some of the work that Epic have done for the uh, arena shooter variant. We made it so we can move and, and look around as both client and server, and also replicating the UI correctly as well. So it's always very careful whenever you use any sort of template provided to you by Epic or anyone else for that matter. Um, even the ones I give you, make sure that they are suitable for your needs. And if they're not suitable, try to build understanding of what actually is happening and how it works. Understanding what runs on server and what runs on client is super important and will help you discern where to make the fixes. So this is only part one. Part one, we've got the movement down. That's all fine. Part two, though, we're going to be adding the replication for the weapons. So at the moment, we can shoot the guns, but we can't replicate or see each other at all what's going on there. 
I'm going to bait it off into a part two video. If you want to watch that part right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find that video plus many others from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all our patrons and YouTube members for the continued support in myself and the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.